Welcome back to the Finding Genius video series. I'm excited to be joined with Andrew Otto from SVB and, and Linda Mustafa, the founder and CEO of The Tract. Uh, Linda is a former athlete and NGO founder. She spent time in finance uh, and is working on the interesting connection between gut and mental health. Uh, I'm excited to kick off the conversation, but trying something new with the series where for the first time, I'm also excited to be joined by Andrew uh, from SVB. So he is a is a well-known mentor of hundreds of different founders across the New York City ecosystem. So it's it's great to have him on. Um, and he's actually the one that introduced us to Linda. So Andrew, I'll let you kick off with a quick introduction and let's let's get into the track right after. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much for having me, Kano. And uh, it's great to be here. So a, a, as part of my role at SVB day to day, um, I mentor hundreds of founders in the city uh, here in New York. And, you know, I myself am always trying to recognize genius, hopefully well before others do, right? So we can work with these founders early on. So in doing that, we, we attend a lot of demo days and I, I was fortunate enough to meet Linda at Techstars where she absolutely rocked her live demo. And I just saw, you know, the passion within Linda of really creating something in Vidtrack that had a, a very personal touch to it, right? How does our gut affect our mental health? How do we think about our food and, and, and a really critical part of what we do day to day and how a, another part of um, of our body and, and our operating system operates, right? And I think we're, we're so busy thinking about building computers and operating systems in tech, we kind of forget about like the original computer, which is our mental health. So I saw a lot of passion in that in Linta. Uh, I'm super excited to get to know her further in this format today. And so Linta, welcome and thank you so much for being here with us. Um, Linda, Thank I see you some, Evan. Yeah, I see some I see some guitars in the background there, so hopefully that was part of the uh, Techstars demo. I wish. I have two guitars <laughs> here and I have a keyboard behind me as well. Oh wow, well, be that'll be interesting. Maybe the next uh, the next recording we can get a live performance or anything else too. Um, but before we get into it, I, I think it would be great. Andrew and I were talking and, and like you just mentioned, it's it's a really interesting connection that you've identified and I think something that maybe often used to go overlook. So before we get into the company itself and you know, what you're building, it would be great to hear a bit about your background and sort of what led you to the insights that led to the founding of the Tract. Um, it would be pretty broad and I'll you know, we'll just keep interrupting a bit. Yeah, I think a lot of um, early stages of building by Tract came from my own experience of navigating the healthcare system and, and the sort of health struggles that I went through as an, as an athlete. So I spent almost a decade and a half competing and training as a national wrestler. Um, and I actually went to college on a wrestling scholarship as well. Um, and it was about second and third year where I started experiencing all these different symptoms um, that were, you know, there were a bit of physical health, a bit of mental health, and the way that our healthcare is currently set, set up is those doctors are all very fragmented. So I went to a lot of different places to try to find care um, and then ultimately ended up with this concoction of pills. And I knew that that was something that I wasn't very, that I was very hesitant about, about the long term uh, use of SSRIs and other drugs. Um, so I went on this whole journey of navigating holistic healthcare and ultimately learned that all of these. Um, symptoms could be tied back to, the, to, to my gut and to gut health. So I went on this long journey of healing my gut health and um, became very, very passionate about how that changed my life. And then when I finished school, I went on to work in finance. I actually worked uh, at a founded a longevity startup prior to this, um, but ultimately knew that my passion was in this area of gut health where I also experienced the most, uh, I guess, um, you know, pain as, as a customer. And that's, that's how we got started. Interesting. Could you talk a bit about gut health and like what those symptoms look like? Cause it, it's for me, at least it's still a new field. Um, and I know it's being explored much more deeply on the tech side of the last maybe, few years, but I think it would be interesting to hear how you understood that that was the problem that you were feeling as an athlete. Maybe it'd be great to hear what kind of athlete you were and how those symptoms were manifesting themselves, but at least for the patient journey, understanding of, of what that looks like. Yeah. For, so for me, the symptoms started as joint pain and then muscle pain. Um, and so I ended up seeing different, uh, 
different doctors and specialists focused on autoimmune um, and autoimmune illnesses. And that's when I started doing a bunch of research relating uh, chronic health issues and how a lot of these, what look like broad symptoms and very similar symptoms in a lot of different people have very different root cause issues that they're stemming from um, and how you know, 90% of our immune system and a lot of other key health components are actually stored within our gut microbiome. And so I think coming out of the pandemic, now a lot of people are talking about gut health and it's coming into the limelight and people are doing the research, but where the consumer pain I think really lies in is on average, patients are spending around 160 hours doing research on whether the information that they're getting is scientifically vetted, whether, you know, they're spend all, spending all this time finding the right holistic care practitioners and the right technologies. And so that's really one of the main problems that we're, at, we're, we're solving for. And, and Linda, I have a question for you. I mean, you are very comfortable talking about mental health, right? I think it takes a lot of strength to do that. It's not always easy to do that in sports or when you're working in finance and, and whatnot. I mean, have you always been comfortable with it? Did you, was there a certain point in time where you were like, hey, I, I'm now comfortable with this. I'm gonna do something about this and create a solution to solve this. Like, what was the turning point for you if there was one, or perhaps you were always kind of comfortable talking about this? I think there was definitely a turning point. So it's interesting that you bring this up because at the time that I was experiencing all these different symptoms, um, you know, I was training and competing at a national level. We had sort of, we had Olympic trials and, tra and training going on while I started experiencing all, all these joint pain and all these things. And um, I remember dropping out at one point out of the team and I couldn't really communicate to my coaches what was happening. And then, um, later on when I started experiencing, so this is more physical and, you know, biological pain at, at this point, but going on to the neurological symptoms and mental health. Um, this is when I was working in investment banking and I was working as a trader. Um, and I, you know, I could, I didn't really understand how to put words to, to these feelings that I was experiencing. And I, I also didn't feel comfortable with it. And I think it's only now that I've, I've been feeling better and I've done all this research and I understand the science and I've you know, had this experience being plugged into online communities, which is one of the things I think that allows me to solve for this problem is I went online searching for solutions and saw that there were hundreds of people doing the same. So I think when I saw that that was normalized and 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 I also was feeling better that looking back, I, now I feel very comfortable talking about it. But I think as I was going through it in the moment and I, I didn't really have the words to put to it, I think um, it was definitely challenging. And I think that tends to be the challenge is when you're immersed in something and there's you don't have that community of people around you that that you feel comfortable with or can can open up to and discuss these things with. I think that's where where the challenge really comes in. And yeah, and I don't want to make assumptions, but like, interestingly, sometimes once you're doing something about a problem as an entrepreneur, like you get way more into it, you get way more comfortable talking about it. But when it's just a problem that feels like a mountain to be climbed, it's, it's kind of hard to address. So there's probably some entrepreneurial spirit in there too, which is pretty cool. Good for you. It's really interesting. And then when you're, when you're looking at it from, you're competing at a national level. You're also in sales trading, like you're mentioning, which is also pretty high stress and kind of the lifestyle you're dealing with. But that, when you identify that this is something that you're dealing with, what does it look like on a national level? You so said there's hundreds of people that are searching for solutions like this, but then when did you decide that this is a, a thing that I want to focus on? I want to spend sort of the next five to 10 years building a company on this. And, and what did that maybe zero, if we focus on the rest of the conversation, zero to, to one, what does that zero to point one look like for you of, of getting this started? Yeah, I, I guess one interesting thing to really note is there are hundreds of these pockets of online communities where people are going to look for all different facets of holistic care, whether it's food as medicine, whether it's um, what to eat for optimizing mental health, and whether it's looking for the right technologies, there's tons of gut tests. So like, how do I pick which one is right for me? So when I started reading through all these comments, I realized that there was this common thread of not knowing, not being able to piece the puzzle of 
how can you take these technologies that are out there and the providers that are out there and commu- have them communicate with each other? And yeah, that's what we do at Viatract is we pair the technology with a provider, which we saw there it isn't happening in the market and people were doing it for themselves within you know, within different online communities, within different Facebook groups. So the zero to one for me was... I first started off by just reaching out to people who are really active in these communities and just setting up chats to learn more about what was really their pain point and what they what they were struggling with. And I think people in the beginning when I was doing this were really open to have these co- these conversations because I also too was looking for answers just like them. So we had that point in common. Um, and as I started doing this, I started getting deeper and deeper into what the what the customer journey and pain point really is. And I also stumbled across, uh, I went to a medical conference where my co-founder now um, was presenting his PhD re- research. And I went up to him and I was like, your work is fascinating. And you know, this is, this is everything I've learned on the patient side. And it, you know, his work is developing novel therapeutics within the gut microbiome, uh, within complex biological systems like the gut microbiome. So we realized that if we could create technology that could help us understand the, the, connect- the gut-brain connection, and then also have the understanding of how patients are thinking about it, then we would be the perfect team to actually take this uh, take this massive problem on. So for me, it was really about taking small steps and figuring out um, what the pain point really was, because I think when you're building within a large you know, digital health and health tech, there are so many different solutions and there are so many different places where you can go to market, but the more honed in you can be around what the problem is, then it gives you something to, to start, a, a point to start building on. Could you talk a bit about the technology that exists today? Because you mentioned SSRIs before, like how advanced kind of what's the history of the technology that's been developed There's therapeutics, there's diagnostics, there's providers maybe doing other sort of gut microbiome tests. How does it, what's a, how far along do you think we are in our understanding of this connection between gut and mental health? Like what is the linkages that you see between those? Yeah, absolutely. I think the timing for this product, for this type of product is, is you know is is exactly right because if you look back five to six years the NIH funded you know almost a billion dollars in gut microbiome research and now we're seeing all of that research materialize and we're seeing um, conclusive research that shows us that there's a very strong connection between the gut and the brain so you know mostly when people talk about um, the body's nervous system they're talking about the central nervous system. Um, but now we're learning that the enteric nervous system, which is actually based in the gut, uses the same types of neurons and neurotransmitters that the central nervous system uses. So they are in constant communication all the time. So what we're doing now is we've compiled, our technology currently consists of 6,000 research papers that have come out, and we use different AI and ML models to pull out key health biomarker information. So what we do is we package that all into a gut test, and we start the patient journey off by understanding what the what their gut is specifically telling us. Now, this is where we spent a lot of time in our in our journey when we were building is a lot of the tests we noticed in the market will offer a test and send you back the results. And as a patient, I know that can be really frustrating and really confusing. So what we've done and what we really optimized for during our time at Techstars was figuring out how we can instill behavioral change and adherence. So now we pair our tests with a clinical care program, a three-month program, where we take those results, we pair the customer or patient up with a uh, care provider, currently registered dietitians, who then meet with you bi-weekly and are able to help you make that behavior change and are constantly in touch with you and making sure that if you have any questions, if you're falling off the track, we can help you um, make the necessary changes to then see meaningful health outcomes. And these health outcomes can be anywhere from reduce stress, improve quality of sleep, improve quality of life, um, reduce drug dependency. That's a really big one. Um, and, and, and that's, that's kind of where we are in, in, in the, in the journey. 
What I mean, one thing I'm amazed by is you've done so much in so little time, right? Off of like an accelerator around here. I mean, it's really, really impressive. And so, and I, I didn't even know the story about like, hey, we're gleaning all these research papers that's feeding into the gut diagnostic and what we do. But I want to hear a little more about like, what, what have some of the struggles been over the last year to get this off the ground? But what were the magical moments, right? What were the, the friendlies who helped you out or the hacks that you found or just different things that really allowed you to go quite far this far on, on not a ton of funding or time? Talk to us about some of the struggles and magical moments along the journey. Yeah, I, th I think that you know, we too are really happy about the the pace that we're growing at. And we've the reason why we've been able to do so with such mi minimal funding is that we've been profitable since day one. So as we were building things, as we were building the test, we were soft launching them in Facebook groups and they were selling out. And so we knew that we had a technology people wanted. And so that was our magical moment of we have something that people want, but we yet don't know how we're going to commercialize this. So that's what we focused on at during our time at Techstars. And I think we grew so fast because we had that network of people like you, Andrew, of all the mentors that we met at Techstars, that whenever we had these big questions that I think you can make really costly mistakes in the beginning. So one of the one of our questions was, one of the bigger questions was around, are we going to go to market direct to consumer or are we going to start off by selling into the pair system? Because there are so many different applications of the technology. And another big one was, are we going to start off by hiring these providers full time? Sorry. Are we going to start off by hiring these providers full time or are we going to contract them? And these are decisions that you make up front, but they're really hard to it, the, the more you build, the harder it is to kind of undo some of these things. Um, so rather than having to spend all this time doing research and um, figuring it out ourselves, we had a, a host of mentors that we could lean on and it helped, it helped us go really fast. Could you share some of the advice that you got, maybe from Andrew himself, but like how you decided, do I go direct consumer? Because there's other startups that are building, not in your space, but similar solutions in other spaces where they're deciding the same thing. We sell to providers and go into the payer system. We go direct to consumer, different economics, different acquisition channels. How closely do we work with providers in the existing research yeah. versus developing something new? What's your, like, how do you make decisions as a CEO or a founder of one of these companies? Yeah, the way I like to think about this and when, I, when I'm thinking about mentors, and we're, I'm doing so very similarly now that we are figuring out who's going to be on our cap table is who do I need in my corner for different decisions? So if I'm making a marketing decision, then I probably have a pool of people that I know I can go to there, or even if it's one person, or, and if I'm making uh, a decision about the me medical advisory board, having someone I can lean on there. So having these different pockets of people who specialize in different things, um, I think having a go-to person in all of these buckets really helps you make those decisions really fast. So when we were the biggest, I would say, decision was around whether we were going to sell um, direct to consumer or start getting start selling to providers the technology right away. And that we spent almost the first one third of the program leaning on the mentors and having like hundreds of phone calls with people to try to figure out to make the most informed decision possible. So we launched very quickly right after that uh, when we decided we were going to go direct to consumer. But when we were making that decision, we leaned on all our mentors who were selling into the pair system. And then so I had like a, I had two buckets of D to C founders and then founders who were selling into the pair system and then really learning like what were their main challenges and if they could go back to our stage, what decision would they make? And what we learned was that, of course, the sales cycle with hospitals and pair systems is so long and having the right efficacy data to go to them um, makes that conversation so much smoother and faster. So we realized that what's one of the strategies that we could take is launching direct to consumer and then layering on that pay pairs piece as we go. So one of our biggest wins during the accelerator was that we were able to get Aetna on board. Um, so now we're 90% reimbursed 
through through Aetna Insurance. And I think that just starts to pave our path towards bringing on other pilots of, of pairs as well. So you, st- you started by going through Facebook groups <laughs> to get this out there and you got Aetna now on board. I mean, that's not bad. Um, and I'd say, listen, as is evidenced by like us talking here, storytelling is a lot of this, right? Like you have to tell yeah. a compelling story and do that. Yeah. What um, slight shift to subject. I mean, you're from Canada. You spent the summer in New York with tech stars. Yeah. How was your time in New York? What do you think of the entrepreneurial community here? I mean, what do you value in an entrepreneurial community to inspire you? And I know we do a lot of city comparisons, not necessarily asking for that here, even though we're pro New York here. But, you know, what, what do you think is important about the community that you were part of this summer and, and communities in general that you seek? Yeah, I think, you know, at hinting to our conversation a little bit earlier, we grew so fast while we were in New York. And that made us realize the power of having mentors, of having founders who are building alongside you. And people say this all the time, but being a founder is quite lonely. And um, be, having that community made us go so much faster. So that is, I think, one of the most exciting things about the New York health tech ecosystem is it's so vibrant. There's so many people who are, you know, much stage, much later stages of building than we are, but so happy to give back and, and generous with their time. Um, so I think that community of founder founders is definitely the biggest and, and most attractive thing to us. Um, another one also is is the is the ecosystem of investors as well. Um, a lot of investor, you know, investors based in New York um, are really excited about New York based companies. So I think having that um, being able to actually meet some of our investors um, in person was was very nice for building that connection with them. Um, so we are definitely thinking of, of a move to, to New York, possibly. Um, yeah. <laughs> Could, could you talk a bit about, I mean, you just mentioned investors and Andrew brings up a good point about the ecosystem here, but could you talk a bit, whether it's New York, international, wherever it is, how you pitched a business such as this? I mean, I think that will be interesting insights for other founders that are watching this in terms of there is some R&D component here. You're making some big decisions. You had Aetna. Is, it, is the fundraise off the heels of that? Or was it a nice add-on as you were out fundraising, but how you pitch a business such as this, or maybe some things you learned during the fundraising process too. Yeah, um, two, bi- two big things is number one, and we were really conscious around this at the beginning, was the team is such a big part of what, what, what you're talking about when you're fundraising. So, you know, my co-founder has a PhD in molecular genetics, has very deep expertise in this area, and our ver- one of our very first team members, um, has spent the past 20 years building gut testing technologies. So all the, the intersection of all of our backgrounds make us a really strong team to go after this problem. And I know people say this time and time again, but really honing down in the early stages of why you are working with the people that you are um, is really, really important. And then the other thing is, I think, looking at consumer trends. So we are building at the forefront of all of these major consumer trends, personalized holistic care being something that everyone is very excited about and and seeking, gut health, everyone's talking about it, everyone's looking for vetted sources. So what we're able to do is we're able to build at the frontier of the what is next in, in healthcare. And, you know, that was one of the things that we also learned while at Techstars was what are things that people are not excited about? If it's just a telehealth platform, are investors still excited about that? And I think those are little cues that you can take from the market. You know, of course, you're not going to build a company around um, around those conversations, but I think those conversations send you hints about what the general market is looking like, and that can be really, really informed. Uh, can be really informing. Um, so looking at consumer trends and really focusing in on the, the strengths of your team. I know we're almost up on time. I have one last one. I'm sure Andrew's got a bunch more too, but on my end, the last one, I, probably everybody that's watching this is wondering, like, do you have any, without giving the secret sauce of the business away, and I know this is very personalized medicine, are there certain trends that you've seen across patients or across all the research that you've done the ML and AI across of, of where sort of maybe patient abuses have led to 
kind of poor gut health or poor mental health conditions? Or are there certain kind of hacks or improvements that you've seen that you can give uh, kind of the audience some advice on? Yeah, the, the ethos that we, we go by in this company is that food is medicine. And so what we're really trying to do, I think at, at a basic level, everyone knows that eating a more plant-based diet and incorporating healthy movement daily um, and managing stress better is good for you. But doing that is actually very hard. And what we're helping people do is bring the right partners on board in their life to be able to do that. And also um, using technology to be for us to be able to do it in a very um, sort of precision nutrition uh, manner. So, you know, one of the things that I would recommend is starting off by um, incorporating small things that you can and, and do for yourself, but also, you know, all of us, I'm sure on this call are very metrics driven and, 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 and being able to, te- you can't improve what you can't test, right? So um, definitely I would recommend keeping, making your health priority as, as you do other things. And whether that's taking a gut health test or whether that's going to the doctor regularly and staying on top of your health, I think all of these things are, are, are what's going to accumulate to to allow us to be, to make the future of healthcare better. My last question I want to end with, uh, you're an athlete, you know, you were in finance on a trading floor, you're playing guitar, apparently. It kind of sounds like you could do anything, right, Linta? And so it's still really hard to take that leap of faith to start a business, right? I'm sure you had the moment of like, am I going to do this? Why? Like, am I going to do this? I'm not so sure. What did it take to take to to take the leap of faith? Was it getting into tech stars? Was it finding that PhD co-founder? I mean, what was the moment that really pushed you over to take the leap of faith? And what would you say to other future founders who are thinking of taking the leap of faith to uh, entrepreneurship? Yeah, it, it was two things. The the number one was I knew that I wanted to work in this space, but I knew that the team was going to be everything. So I was very, very intentional around finding a co-founder that not only had the deep expertise that I was looking for, but worked really well with me on, on a personal level. So we actually tested that relationship in the beginning. We built little projects together. We spent a couple months just working on different things to give us a feel for what it was like to work for each for, with each other. Um, and when that clicked and we knew that we had the same vision for what we wanted to build for this company, that's when that's when we knew that we were going to take the leap of faith. And then it was all about how can we practically actually do this? So whether it was selling tests in the beginning to start to generate some revenue and then taking s- steps towards, you know, um, leaving our, our day jobs and uh, getting into definitely getting into tech stars was a, a great signal for us and an opportunity for us to move somewhere and focus just on the business. Um, so I think it was a combination of, of those two things that, that made it possible. Awesome. So thank you so much. This was really great, very helpful. Uh, and appreciate your time and all the best to everything. Thank you. Thank you both. It was great. Great ch- chatting with both of you. Thanks.